Usually esports players are some of the most gentle people you can come across, with the most danger that you'd ever be put in at a convention being that, well, the lack of deodorant. And the most violence they would ever subject anything to is maybe punching a hole in their mum's wall. But sometimes gamers do go too far, and this is a video detailing all the most horrific crimes that we've seen esports players do and sometimes get away with. Time to learn about when gamers kill the esports murders, and I don't mean get kill in game, they get kill in real life. A pro gamer could be described as a mental athlete of sorts. And whoever outplays the competition and wins on the big stage takes home not only the cash prize, but all the pride and bragging rights that comes along with that. And the Dude, Smash players are another breed. That every esports gamer is in one area and Smash players are in a totally different area. ...leave dejected and humiliated. Beef is common in esports, with heated exchanges between rivals seen both online and offline. It's extremely uncommon terrified. for a gaming feud to turn violent, and even more rare for one to turn deadly. Which brings us to the story of Madden player David Katz. At the time of this story taking place, David Katz was a 24-year-old man from Baltimore, Maryland. Katz could be described as a troubled individual from a well-off family. David's father- Why is it always like that? The people that go and do stuff like this is always like, mm, well, you know, they had a bit of a past where they did some deranged things, but they had a pretty good family, you know? Like, actually, a lot of them don't have good families. A lot of them come from places that are, like, not ideal. Some childhoods that are, like, not very good. He was a career engineer for NASA, and his mother was a state toxicologist. This family Oh my was god, dude, a doctor? and a scientist, a astrophysicist, so of some kind, a NASA person. That's like the highest tier parents that you can get that's not straight up just billionaire. ...who have had a drawn out and traumatic divorce that deeply affected David. As a young adult and adolescent, David had been hospitalized on numerous occasions related to mental illness. The young man apparently oh, suffering from frequent psychotic bouts. David was prescribed the medication Risperdal at a young age that helped curb some of his symptoms, but lapses would still occur. Documents from the Katz family divorce also speak on the young man's mental health struggles. These papers claim that David was being treated for schizophrenia and that oh, David that's not a good go, recipe. go days without bathing, play games until 4 a.m. on school nights, and would walk around the house in circles. Doc Okay, apart from the walk around the house in circles, I was just like, damn, I I, I used to do that shit. Uh, I, I didn't used to walk around the house in circles. I do that now, though, because I got to hit my 10,000 steps, baby. You know, you got 7,000 steps in, you're not going outside. Yeah, I'll walk around my living room for a bit. It's not... It's not weird, that's normal. No, I'm just getting steps in. David Katz once punched a hole in his mother's door when his game controller was taken by her. He also frequently threw tantrums that ended in him curling up into a ball and crying. David struggled with mental health throughout his formative years, and only one thing really brought the young man joy, that being Madden. As a child and teenager, David found refuge in the Madden video game franchise, playing these games religiously hours upon hours a day. In the Madden community, David would become a feared competitor and was known throughout the community by his various gamer tags, including Raven's Champ, Bread, and Texas Have a Heart Attack. Dave what? what was that last one? Jesus Christ, that was- I thought he just like fell over on the keyboard for that last one. Let's see, should've stuck with the Bread name. Bread name's good. Raven's Champ, also a great name. The last one just sounds like he fell over, like he just face planted heart the attack. keyboard. David would eventually begin entering Madden tournaments and found success in 2017 when he won the Madden 2017 Championship. An excerpt nice. written about this event describes David's apparently clutch victory. In what is Madden super popular in the US? Because I feel like the US is the only market you can really sell Madden in, right? At least the only market where it's going to be very successful. Because you sell Madden here, no one's really going to care about it. No one plays American football in the UK. No one's playing it in Europe. So it must be like absolutely ginormous to make the kind of sales that FIFA does. It must be huge. What some are calling the most exciting moment in all of the 2017 NFL Club Series championships, David Bread Katz. David Bread Katz. That's a brilliant name. He should have kept that one. one with a walk-off victory by completing an unbelievable pass as time expired to be crowned Buffalo Bills champion. The crowd nice. at 716 Food and Sports in Buffalo, New York was amazed with the clutch execution in the fourth quarter. I don't know why I'm like getting excited about this or like being like, oh, dude, that's that's awesome. Considering he's literally like a criminal and a murderer. Like to go for it. I'm about winning. 
by any means necessary. And he's Go! Oh. I don't know if this is a good play, but I think this is a good play. That's not a good play. That's an insane play. The young man from Columbia, Maryland, the last play of the game, and he gets it done. It's a touchdown. And while many competitive gamers celebrate their victories with a ridiculous pop-off of sorts, David was always said to have been rather stoic after securing the dub. Esports commentators have described- Well, okay, that's not really weird though. Some people are just a little bit more reserved, that's okay. Especially when you play on a live stream or on a stage, you got so many people with their binoculars out watching your every movement. You know, you're not gonna pop off. What if you slip? I would be so socially anxious on a stage, I wouldn't pop off on a stage because I'd be too scared that I would like slip over and then make myself look like an idiot, but at least it'll be a funny clip. Maybe it'll be worth it for the clip though. David as not showing emotion when he plays and one has been quoted saying to even get him to open up and talk to you about anything, it's like pulling teeth. Uh, he came in as this, he's just like a you know inward individual. I don't think this has anything to do with what he eventually ended up doing. Because again, I, I would be like this as well. I think that YouTube's brought me out of my shell and streaming's brought me out of my shell and going to events and doing things on stage has definitely helped. But back when I was in like high school, when I was younger, I would be very introverted, very insular, like nervous to talk to anyone on a camera. Like it's just hard, man. He just knocked off the two seat and he did pretty convincingly. Um, yeah, I don't think of myself as a seven seed. I think personally I'm one of the better players um, and I like to let my game prove that. As David became more proficient at Madden, he would tour around the country and enter various Madden tournaments in the hopes of getting some cash prizes. And for the narrative of this story, none of those tournaments are important. But day two of a 2018 Jacksonville, Florida tournament is critical. The date was August 26th of 2018. Day two of competition oh, this is pretty recent. for the local Madden NFL. Wait, 2018 was five years ago. Oh my god, I looked at 2018 and I was like, oh no, dude, that was like super recent. That, that must not happen that long ago. But no, that was five years ago now, man. What is happening to time? 19 qualifier event. Feeling the old. The day begins with 30 or so gamers hunched in front of TV and computer screens, donning headsets and preparing to eliminate one another in a tournament where the winner takes all. A $5,000 cash prize as well as a shot at entering the marquee event in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the prize for that marquee event was $125,000. Jeez, for Madden? Oh my god! What? I thought that was reserved for like League of Legends, like Dota, like Counter Strike, the big boys at esports, the Valorants. For Madden? That's insane. I had no idea this even existed. Madden qualifier events attracted some of the highest level Madden players from the country, and thousands were watching this live on Twitch. The venue hosting this event was the Good Luck Have Fun Game Bar. And as the day's Madden matches commence, let's just say David wasn't playing his best. It's been reported that David had been acting having a bit of an off day. day, even more so than his normal impassive self. During the event, one player that had beaten David said that Katz refused to shake his hand after a loss. Quote, I went to shake his hand and tell him good game and he just looked at me and didn't say anything. I might have been having a bad day. You know, it might have been something happening in the lead up to the tournament. You never know. Honestly, you never know what's going on in people's lives, right? There could have been something that happened at home. He's a distracted, which can also affect how you play games. Could have been something personal that happened that caused him to, to, to play badly. And then also when you play badly, you're in your head, you're not feeling good. You don't want to like interact with people as well. That's probably why. concerning behavior from David was witnessed after losing against another player named Bugs. And this loss would knock David out of the tournament. And needless to say, he didn't handle it well. He reportedly had an outburst, wouldn't shake Bugs' hand and stormed off angrily. Most likely thought that after storming off, David had packed his bags and went home. But in all reality, he had gone to pick up some guns. David would return what? to the tournament floor with two loaded handguns, one of which had a laser sight. At 1.30 p.m., two hours into the tournament, David Katz re-entered the venue and rained down 12 shots upon the establishment, sending a foray of bullets towards competitors and spectators. David's first shot was actually caught on live stream, with the red dot from David's laser sight oh being my seen pointed at the chest of 22. Jesus Christ, dude! That is so mad! Messed up. That is deranged. I, I don't I don't want to go back and show that. That's actually terrifying. You see the red dot go across his chest. That's complete. That means it's premeditated. It's got to be premeditated then. 
He, he literally brought the guns to the events, knowing that in case that he lost, he was going to go hog wild and just start shooting folks, shooting up the place. 22-year-old gamer Elijah Clayton. Gunshots and screams echoed throughout the venue, with everyone in attendance making a mad dash for survival. A live stream from the tournament captured audio of the chaos. Oh, you can hear the shots the as well. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's insane. Tables were flipped as contestants hid from David as the shots rang out throughout the rooms. Some of those who made it to cover would make frantic calls to 911, prompting a police and SWAT response to the ongoing active shooter situation. Sheriff deputies arrived to the Madden tournament around 1.36 p.m. What followed was a standoff of sorts with some people who had actually escaped the event live tweeting the situation on Twitter. I got out, police escorted me. I'm done going to any Madden events, not EA majors with security. Dude, this is insane that in this day and age, you can just like log on to Twitter randomly, like refresh your full you page and see someone like shooting survivors being like, I'm safe, the, the shooter is like caught or something like that. I'm just like, that's insane that that's even a thing that can happen now. Eventually gunfire from inside the venue would stop. That being because David had taken himself out. Officers oh my and gosh. firefighters would then begin a methodical did he, scan did of he the get anyone else? for victims. And they would soon discover- He didn't kill anyone. Please tell me he didn't kill anyone else. ...the bodies of the deceased. Those no. individuals being 27-year-old Taylor Robertson, 22-year-old Eli Clayton, and David Katz himself. A no, the guy from the- That's so fucked up, man. would go up, on to man. discover another 11 wounded individuals who would all survive. One of these survivors had actually been shot in the chest, but luckily was stabilized due to the fast response time from authorities. E so he brought the guns to the event. Someone in chat said that he bought the guns after he lost, which is insane to me that you can literally lose a Madden event, go and get guns to do a shooting spree, come back to the event with plenty of time to execute people. How can you get guns that easily? That's crazy. In the UK, you have to do like five background checks, have people support you. You have to do an interview with like a police commissioner first before they like deem you you know stale enough to and and sound of mind enough to get guns you can just walk into a shop buy guns and be back in time within like what 20 minutes that's ridiculous EMTs and fire departments the sheriff's department held a press conference and gave updates on what had happened Later that evening, family members of the surviving victims tweeted out updates to show that the survivors were in stable condition. EA Sports would put out the following statement in regard to the shooting. The tragic situation that occurred Sunday in Jacksonville was a senseless act of violence that we strongly condemn. I wonder how many of these kinds of statements get released on like a daily basis in America. Or even not just in America, but just like across the world. I can imagine this exact statement or some variation of it, maybe like three, four times a week. Actually, it might be every single day. This this exact statement. It was a tragic shooting. We strongly condemn the violence. Our thoughts and prayers are with the people who are affected. We're investigating the situation. Boom. Copy and paste. Send it out, boys. You need to control V and control C that thing every single day. Or the other way around for copy and paste. Our most heartfelt sympathies go out to the families of the victims whose lives were taken today and those who were injured. All of us at Electronic Arts are devastated by this horrific event, and we also join the community in thanking the first responders who were quickly on the scene. Our focus right now is on those affected and supporting law enforcement as they continue their investigations into this crime. This became an international news story and the country came together to support those who had been involved in this shooting event. In one interview, a man who was present at the shooting itself, Toshiba Sharon, would say that he wanted the families of Eli and Taylor, the deceased victims, to know that they didn't die alone and that they died with family. That family oh, being the sucks. Madden community itself. I just wanted to pay my respects to the family and just let them know that their family member didn't die alone. They died with, um, that's gotta be so him. hard. <laughs> Man, I will say it takes it takes a lot of bravery to go on a, an interview right after that happens. It takes a lot of bravery to be able to go on a camera in front and like answer questions about a horrific event that it just happens. I, I don't know if I'd be able to they do that to be honest. With, uh, a brotherhood that loved them and they died doing something that they uh, loved to do. Taylor Robertson was a successful Madden player in his own right. Oh no, he was a dad. Prior 18 matches and had career winnings of over $80,000. Eli Clayton was an up and comer in the Madden scene. This young man was a former high school football player and had won Madden 22, man. He was passionate about football in real life and in the gaming world as well. 
Rest in peace to these victims. It's been so Oh, they got time. killed for being good at Madden. This is insane. I, I read about something recently where, like, this woman got shot because she pulled into the wrong driveway. And some old guy, like, freaked out and just shot her dead. And this kid opened the door to the wrong house. He was gonna go and pick up his siblings. Opened the door to the wrong house. Got shot twice. Insane. Since the shooting had taken place, and the biggest question surrounding all of it was why did David perpetrate an act like this? There is an obvious explanation for it, being that David comes from a troubled background, has a mental health history, and that combined with competitive gaming just resulted in a psychotic break. But there are also alternative narratives out there that try to explain why he did this. Mutual acquaintances of David Katz, who have remained anonymous, claim that David and one of the shooting victims, Elijah Clayton, the man who was seen with the laser sight pointed at his chest, had a long-standing underlying gaming beef. In addition to the clear friction Bro, between a gaming David beef. Katz and Elijah Clayton- Oh my god, I'm, that's insane that someone can die because of a gaming beef. You go into Valorant and you just talk shit all the time because that's what you're supposed- That's what you do! Unlike Call of Duty and Halo, you used to go online and just talk shit because that's what you're supposed to do. It's not even- it's not serious, man. It's just- it's just, it's also just a game. that David specifically targeted other Madden players in his attack. Both of the deceased attendees hey, he was were salty that he lost. and competitors. And a number of those wounded were as well. I think it would be reasonable to say that David's attack could have been motivated by revenge, with the twisted man wanting to hurt the gamers that knocked him out of the tournament. Needless to say, David Katz was an emotionally unstable individual and apparently was willing to kill to settle minor scores. On October of 2019, That's fucking crazy. Landing, the greater location of where the shooting took place, was completely demolished. While the venue may be gone, its destruction won't erase the memory of what happened the morning of August 26th of 2018. Yeah, I'm not even surprised they demolished it. Also, what was that stock footage that they just used? They used like some random stock footage from like Dubai or something Fuck like that. That story. All right, well, that was the Madden shooter. Let's see, who, let's see who's next. The call, dude, Call of Duty. Call of Duty During Mobile? The COVID-19 pen. I thought mobile players were more, I'm gonna be honest. I thought they were more well adjusted than console players. I don't know why I thought this. I thought the mobile players are people that play on the go whilst they're out and about, whilst they're socializing, whilst they're on the way to work. I thought that for some reason that mobile players would be a little bit more stable. Pandemic with some people quarantined and people just generally staying inside more. You saw a map. Also, didn't only like 15 people play COD Mobile? Massive influx of new gamers and gaming in general. In 2021, Latin America in particular saw a 200% increase in sales and merchandise connected to gaming. Competitive mobile gaming rose to popularity thanks to Battle Royale sh- What? Nope. All right, I was wrong. I was wrong. Four million people in a day. 61 million average monthly players. Nope, I was wrong. I'm taking the L on that one. It's like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone being ported Whoops. over to smartphones. Which brings us to the subject of our next murderous gamer, 18-year-old Brazilian man, Guilherme Alves Costa. Guilherme played Call of Duty Mobile competitively under the name Flashlight for the gaming team Gamers Elite. As far as the man's bio- It also blows my mind that there are mobile esports players. Like, how did this come about? I guess if you have so many players, you're gonna have some kind of competitive scene as well. But it just doesn't sit right with me. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that almost fits in, but doesn't quite fit the, the place. It doesn't seem right. Information, Alves was said to have come from a loving family, with his mother describing him as a good boy. However, Guilherme was not without struggle. This young man reportedly battled with depression at one point expressing that he was completely unhappy and tired with life. He was said to have had few friends and had a difficult time getting along with people. However, one individual that he did get along with was a female gamer from a rival Call of Duty mobile team. While playing COD Mobile, Guilherme met 19-year-old Ingrid Oliveira Bueno de Silva, who went- Whoa, that is- that is a long name. It's by the alias Soul online. Ingrid competed professionally for a group of players called Fantastic Brazil Impact, the team frequently competing against Guilherme's team. Through their Call of Duty rivalry, Guilherme and Ingrid apparently had gotten close to each other and I know had where this is going. life on at least one occasion, with Ingrid visiting Guilherme's house and his mother commenting that the two seemed like good friends. 
It's unknown if there was a romantic element to this relationship, but needless to say, the two enjoyed each other's company. At least, it seemed that way on the surface, as what we soon find is that Guilherme's motive for becoming close to this woman wasn't to seek romance or friendship, it was what? to kill her. On what? Bro! Okay, that kind of blew my mind. I was thinking the way this story goes, he falls in love with her, she doesn't reciprocate, she's like, whoa, stay away from me, you're kind of weird, I don't like this. Maybe we should just like spe stop speaking. He's like, no, I'm, a I'm obsessed with you now. I thought it was that kind of situation. You're telling me there's no romance or whatever? Or at least not on his side, right? I was thinking he might have developed some strong feelings towards her. February 22nd of I thought that's how it was gonna go. Ingrid would visit Guilherme at his Sao Paulo home under the premise that the two would be playing Call of Duty in person together. What Ingrid didn't realize at the time is that Guilherme had been plotting for close to two weeks to lure her over and kill her. After Why? Ingrid arrived, Guilherme would lure the heads. young woman into his bedroom. Shortly after, the deranged man would procure a sword and began violently slashing and stabbing a at sword? the woman. Continu where do you get a sword even from? Continuing his assault until she was dead. In a sickening display of depravity, Guilherme would then record footage of her dead body after committing the murderous deed. In this not safe for life footage, it said that the sword handle could be seen protruding from the victim's stomach while Guilherme maniacally chuckles to himself. This gruesome footage was later uploaded to a WhatsApp group that Guilherme's gaming friends used. Guilherme comments, oh my God. you're thinking it's ink or that it's editing or something, but it's not. In this grisly video recorded by Guilherme- Bro, what is the motivation for this stuff? Didn't, didn't he want friends? This guy, this guy was completely brain broken. More so than the point than anyone else. Insane. A sword? And upload it to the internet? I mean, he obviously, he has no- The one brain cell that he has to rub with the edge of his cranium wall was working overdrive that day. He uploaded it to a WhatsApp group. Jesus Christ, imagine opening a WhatsApp group that's usually just for like memes and like funny Call of Duty posts. Like the, the post above it is like some weird meme where it's like, haha, got a red dot site. He's like, oh sick, got a red dot site. And then it's all of a sudden there's like a sword murder video. That's insane. He would also add some commentary, claiming that he had written a 52-page manifesto that oh, would Okay, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. What is it with crazy insane people in their manifestos. How do they have time to just sit down and write down all that stuff? No one's gonna read it, bro. Like, the police is gonna read it and be like, yep, there was another insane person. There's not anything new in it. You're probably going and say, like, actually, women women don't like me. That's, I, I hate that. That sucks. Explain why he committed his killing, but he didn't elaborate on the motive directly. I really killed her. Got it? I've got a book, too. I asked some people to share it. I hope you read it. It contains some truths. What, like the sun rises in the morning? Dude, what, what are you writing in this? It contains some truth? Bro thinks he's Einstein. He thinks he's like on the next level. He thinks he's inside of the matrix on another plane of existence. Whatever you're writing in there, first off, it isn't the first time that anyone's ever thought this stuff. And secondly, it's not useful to anyone. Bom, vocês estão achando que é tinta, que é montagem ou algo do tipo, mas não, não é. Eu realmente matei ela, entendeu? E, bom, eu tenho um livro também. Bro's wearing a skull mask. Jesus Christ, dude. O pessoal está divulgando já esse meu livro. E é isso aí. Eu espero que vocês leiam. Tem algumas verdades. The gamers in what a horrific demon. The you can't who just blame mental health on this one. Messages from Guilherme would immediately contact police over the matter. Meanwhile, Guilherme would flee the scene of the murder. His brother would arrive home shortly after. He fleed the scene of the murder? Why? You uploaded your killing to a WhatsApp group, man. It's GG's. It's over. Do you think you can just run away? That they're like, oh man, he's not here. I guess. I guess that's. I guess we can't do anything. He, he's gone. Uh, he wasn't in. He wasn't in any of the rooms. We checked the fridge too. He's not there. Guess we can't find him. Found the dead body and called police as well. Surprisingly, authorities wouldn't have to go on any manhunt to find this killer, as Guilherme turned himself in. Arresting officers noted that Guilherme seemed relatively calm about the matter, also stating that he seemed to understand the seriousness of the situation. When they asked what his motive was, Guilherme stated, quote, because I wanted to. Uh, this is the most scary type of person. I don't understand like why people are so scared of like ghost movies or monsters or higgly bigglies that go bump in the night. This is the kind of stuff I'm scared of. Just random people 
Like, I actually, I just want to kill someone. No specific reason. There's nothing in there that you can treat. There's there's nothing that you could fix. There is not, it's just randomly, there's just a person that's just like, I really want to kill someone. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to manipulate someone to come over to my house and I'm going to slice them up with a sword. That's terrifying that there are people out there. What in people is making them do this? What turns their brain a certain way. What kind of electrical synapses are creating this desire? That's so scary. Dude, no wonder women are so cautious when it comes to men. There are people out there like this that exist. I swear to God, there's no way you could just be like, oh, yeah, not all men are d d gross murderers that'll slice you up with a sword. Yeah, no, but there are some though. There are some. That's what's scary. I mean, this is scary for men too. This is scary for me. If you walk in a dark alley, there might be someone that just like decides to cut you up because they wanted to. They didn't know what it, they just want to know what it feels like to cut someone up. They might just want to mug you. Bro, people are scary. Okay, kids. Because I wanted to. Jesus Christ. Você tá rindo de uma situação, Guilherme. Você matou uma menina novinha, Guilherme. Por que você fez isso? He would inform police that his killing was premeditated and had been meticulously planning this murder for close to two weeks. After his arrest, authorities would search. Why would you say that you've been meticulously planning it? That just upgrades you to first degree murder and it's not even a contest. It's like GG's, it's over. Scalermay's home and found the 52 page manifesto that he referenced in the Grizzly video. This manifesto was titled My Dictionary and in it he claimed that the killing Jeez, I thought he was gonna call it my struggle for a second. I was about to lose it. Of Ingrid was done as a methodical attack against Christianity. The What? I get- Oh wow, Jesus will be- Yeah, Jesus has been real quiet since that happened. Oh man, you did it. You, you really- you really showed Christians. What? Okay, not to apply any kind of logic to this or to try and apply any logic to this because this is obviously a completely insane person that has no logic within them or just lives on a completely different logical plane to us. They just don't, they just don't understand it. What, what are you doing? What are you doing to Christians? I don't get it. Tales of exactly what Galerme meant by this isn't exactly clear. His writings were said to have consisted of incoherent ramblings loosely detailing his depression and dissatisfaction with life. It has been reported that Galerme mentions wanting to attack a Christian church in the manifesto. A psychoanalysis performed on Galerme would reveal that the man suffered from a persistent delusional disorder and antisocial personality disorder. Outside of this, the only other clues to his motives comes from a statement that he gave to an arresting officer. Quote, she crossed my path. And outside of that and what we've previously discussed, that's really all that's known in terms of motive. Dude, that reminds me of the, the horror movie where, the, I don't know what it's called, where they break into this couple's house and they like just torrent, tor torment and, and murder them like the whole night. And they, and they at the end, they're like, why did you do this? And there's because, oh, well, your door was open. It's like no actual motivation whatsoever. There, it was just the availability was there. So you're just like, fuck, I'm just gonna go for it, man. Sometime after Guilherme's arrest, Gamers Elite, his gaming team, would issue a statement to local media stating that the team's leadership had never met Guilherme in person and that the team members were appalled by Guilherme's actions. Most yeah, players I'd said they'd so. never even seen his face until the video was sent to them. As the news spread online, many took to Twitter to voice their opinions regarding the incident. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> After a, a well-researched documentary on the how this uh, thing happened, uh, now we're gonna see what random people on Twitter think. Let's, most paying let's see some cool opinions on there. Expressing their condolences to her friends and family. Eventually, the man would- with every the single situation, there will be at least one deranged lunatic that's like, well, actually, like, yeah, no. It's totally cool that they attacked Christianity by murdering some random uh, girl that was playing Call of Duty. That's actually it. There's always someone on there, especially now. Does anyone else realize that Twitter is way more insane now than it used to be? My For You page is filled with deranged lunatics. His trial for his killing. Guilherme's defense team would hire a psychiatrist who diagnosed him with persistent delusional disorder and antisocial personality disorder. Shocker. On August 15th of 2022, Guilherme Costa was found guilty for aggravated murder and he was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Curious- What? What? 14? What? You, you lure a person into your house and predetermine a way for a week and literally write out a 52 page manifesto about how you're gonna cut someone up and slaughter someone and you get 14 years? 
That's deranged. What what justice system is this? 14. Oh my god. Honestly enough, it's been reported that the reason Guilherme got 14 years instead of life in prison is because a psychiatrist had found him to be semi-imputable, meaning a medical professional had determined that a delusional state contributed to the killing, and Guilherme wasn't fully of sound mind when he perpetrated his crime. In a How do you rehabilitate that though? What are you gonna do in 14 years? This person clearly isn't safe to be around people. I'm all for rehabilitation over just punishment and incarceration because you're a bad, bad boy and you get spanked. I think that it's important that you try to rehabilitate people and where possible introduce them back into society as better people than when they were taken away from society. But you, how do you, you can't rehabilitate this, man. What are you gonna do? In 14 years, you actually deserve, he deserves less time in prison. We're just gonna let, kick him out onto the streets and be like, well, well, you, you did your 14 years. He's gonna be like, all right, cool. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna, uh, just gonna grab another sword. Sad case involving a delusional psychopath who simply wanted to kill. That was the story of Galerme, the Call of Duty mobile killer. Bro, you get more years in prison for like selling weed in some areas. That's just ridiculous. Gears of War 4, wait, Gears of Daniel War. Daniel Zietz, also known by his gamer Gears of War, Phobos, slaps. had been playing Gears of War competitively since 2006. Well, Dude, it's a shame that Gears of War competitive is kind of like dead completely, because it was actually super sick. I used to watch it back in the day. Or the explosion of esports into the mainstream. Daniel was one of the first professional Gears of War players and was a oh, member no, we of share a gaming a name. team known as the Amazing Squad. He would often attend Great. MLG competition and had been described by his friends and competitors as one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. Aside uh -oh. from his Phobos gamer tag, Daniel was often called Mr. Buddy Buddy, which was a nickname that his friends and competitors gave him simply because he was such a kind person. In addition to frequenting tournaments, Daniel also streamed live on Twitch. Okay, he streamed on Twitch nine years ago, 67 views. Okay, well, at least he didn't pop off. Twitch, playing games like Destiny, and Titanfall. And on Destiny's nine years old? I'm so old. Fortunately for Daniel, it would be a gaming related interaction that would ultimately put him in the situation that leads to his death. In Atlanta, Georgia, on the night of September oh, no. 12th of 2014, Daniel was playing games with some of his friends when he told them that he'd be right back. He then steps outside to meet a couple that he had gotten in contact with over Craigslist. Apparently, Daniel had made plans to meet with this couple and sell them his PlayStation 4. The console was relatively new on the market and was difficult to find. Daniel would meet up with this Oh no, it's the PlayStation 5 situation. Surely it couldn't have been worse than the PlayStation 5 when that came out. That was like crack rocks on the street when, when that came out. There's no way you could find it. You had to be in like some kind of Scientology group to be able to find a PlayStation 5. In the parking lot of his Sandy Springs apartment at approximately 9.30 p.m. At this rendezvous point, he would meet the individuals he had been communicating with on Craigslist. Those individuals being 20-year-old Nathaniel Vivian and 16-year-old Kayla Dixon. The girl's 16-month-old baby was brought along as well. However, oh, no. what you might no, have put dude, together no. by this point is that the couple Not that wanted to do this PlayStation transaction at 9.30 at night, they didn't have the best intentions. As a matter of fact, Nathaniel had been meticulously planning a robbery with Kayla for over a week by this point. Apparently, Nathaniel, low on money, had actually recently sold his- Yeah, listen, if anyone's knocking on my door at 9.30 at night, it's over. GG's. I'm turning the lights off, I'm locking the doors, I'm, I'm arming the Alexa. I'm getting the auto turrets out, like no shot, no way. Own PlayStation 4 to pay rent and wanted to get another console to replace it. He thought the best way to so do he's gonna so mug was him? to sucker somebody in on Craigslist and steal it from them. In the planning of the robbery, Nathaniel even- This is why I don't trust anyone on Craigslist. I got scammed on Facebook Marketplace once when some single mother air quotes wanted to sell some like, good cards and I was like negotiating with them and I was like, okay, cool. I sent them the money, I'm an idiot. They never sent the cards. They said I was scamming them. I couldn't do a charge back. Honestly, never go on Facebook Marketplace. You are, it's a 100% chance you will get scammed. Probably an 85% chance you'll get mugs on Craigslist too. And searched up terms like how to rob some Someone on YouTube. His Come intention on, for organizing this Craigslist meet was very clear. 
After the group meets up- Do you got a 15 year old pregnant? Present. Yeah, how old was the fella? Cause she's 16 years old and she was a mother with a 16 month old child, which means that worst possible case scenario, she was like 14. He was 20? Oh dude, come on, man. The trees, the conversation then switches to the PlayStation in Daniel's hands. And it's at this point where Nathaniel lunges towards Daniel and grabs it, trying to pull it out of his hand. So Nathaniel quickly grabs the console and tries to rip it away, but but Daniel resists and actually puts up a fight, not having any of this robbery. And seeing that Nathaniel was getting overpowered by Daniel, that's when Kayla comes into play. Seeing the ongoing struggle, it's at this point where Kayla reaches into Nathaniel's glove box and pulls out a 25 caliber pistol. She aims- Oh yeah, no, it's a good thing you brought the kid. They, uh, they wouldn't want to miss out on this. ...the firearm at Daniel and pulls the trigger. The- Does she miss? Does she miss and hit the other chap instead? Bullet pierces Nathaniel's hand and then hits Daniel in the chest, causing oh no. him to fall to the ground breathless. Nath okay, well, at the very least, having it go through the hand means it'll lose some momentum, so it'll do less damage, right? Daniel quickly scoops up the PlayStation, hops into the vehicle, and this would-be Bonnie and Clyde flee the scene, leaving- Dude, it's not worth it. Having a PlayStation 4 is not worth getting shot through the hand. It's not worth robbing someone. It's not worth doing a murder. Daniel for dead. Nearby what an absolute scum. What a slug. Police. Officers would arrive to find Daniel's dead body. Meanwhile, Nathaniel- Oh no, he's dead. No, come on, man. Nathaniel and Kayla were on the way to the hospital themselves to get Nathaniel's shot hand looked at. Oh my God, they really think they're just gonna walk in and be like, uh, so you got shot in the hand, right? Like, oh yeah. I, I just got shot in the hand about 20 minutes ago. Then the police come in, they say, we heard gunshots about 20 minutes ago. Nathaniel looks at his hand and says, yeah, I stabbed myself actually, not a, nope. After arriving and showing doctors the injury, they made up a fake story explaining what had happened, stating that they were in fact victims of a robbery and that Nathaniel had been shot in the process. Since Daniel told shot by what gun? staff that he had Which been gun was shot it? as a result of a crime, police were notified in this matter. And they were able to put two and two so together dumb. here and realize that the guy was full of- Okay, I understand that sometimes police officers and investigators aren't the, the smartest people in the shed, but like, come on, man. What is this? I guess you have to be a bit of an idiot to get a 15 year old pregnant when you're about 19 years old. Oh shit, and he actually got the injury from, you know, Kayla shooting at Daniel, the guy that they just actually robbed. This resulted in Nathaniel and Kayla confessing and admitting that they were responsible for the death of Daniel. Both were arrested at Northside Hospital and were booked in Fulton County Jail. The district- She's too young to even be tried as an adult though. And she has a kid. Despite Kayla being a teenager, she would be tried as an adult. All right, never mind. I was wrong. And before you knew it, these botched robbers were facing murder charges. With Daniel being somewhat of a popular as well. figure in the esports community, news of his death spread quickly. KL Arctic Smith, Daniel's friend, teammate, and the last man to ever speak with him, set up a GoFundMe account to help with funeral costs. This GoFundMe eventually raised close twenty three thousand dollars. Holy to damn! Twenty three thousand six hundred and eighty four dollars. KL Smith also made a tribute video expressing his sorrow for losing his friend as well. Uh, one of our teammates was uh, basically. <clears throat> robbed and uh he resisted the robbery and was shot and killed and that teammate is, is phobos uh or danny he uh was so friendly to everyone that we had ever met and you know when, when any of us were having a rough day you know you talk to danny he cheer you up tragic loss uh you know I, I feel really bad for his families my condolences go out to them and i can only hope that you guys uh if you were touched by him at all um, you know, either through Gears of War or just one of his videos, you happen to run into him, play a game with him, uh, you know, please try to help. Uh, that's all I can ask. Uh, you know, I don't ask a whole lot from uh, any of you guys. It's, it's so tragic. I don't, I don't really have too many words for, um, you know, what has happened, but it, it really sucks. In June of 2016. That's, that's awful, man. Don't use Craigslist. Do you literally have no idea who's coming, especially in America? Oh my God. And especially at night. A nighttime transaction for a PlayStation is a recipe for disaster. That's awful. I was really hoping he would have survived as well since the bullet went through the hand. But if he got shot in the chest, like it can punch her a lung, it could go straight into your heart. During what was supposed to be Kayla's first day of trial, she announced that she had taken a plea deal and would serve 40 years in prison. While 40 years! Jesus Christ. In the court, she apologized in tears. Quote, I would trade anything, almost anything to bring Daniel back, but I know- Hold on. 
wait a minute, she got 40 years for murdering Daniel, which she did. It was predetermined. She murdered Daniel. The sword guy who cut up the lass filmed it, put it in front of everyone, and then said, yeah, I did it. I did it on purpose because I wanted to. Got 14? Less than half? What? I mean, I understand they're different countries, but what is going on? No, I can't. I want Daniel's family That's Brazil. to know that I regret that day. I'm so sorry. I ask that God heals the hearts of Daniel's loved ones. I know I'm facing a long time away and I hope one day my apology will matter. In it August doesn't. of 2016, during Nathaniel Vivian's trial, his defense attorney placed the blame on Kayla. Quote, everyone's testimony today never had Nate touching the gun. Only that Kayla had the gun, took it out of the glove compartment, and shot. However, the Okay, well, Nathaniel would have told her the gun's in the glove compartment. If anything goes wrong, grab the gun. Here's the gun. Here's how we're gonna do the robbery. We're gonna meticulously plan out everything. He's 20 years old. She's... 16 years old, easily manipulated, young and impressionable, the mother of presumably his kid as well. So this, this girl's been groomed from like day dot. Please tell me he got like insane time in prison as well. Prosecutors argued that Nathaniel held responsibility as he was the one that planned the robbery and was the one that first attempted to take the game console from Daniel. Quote, they methodically planned to steal a $280 PlayStation, and that's what they did. $280. And the death of Daniel Zietz was a direct result of that. That's on ridiculous. Wait, how much time did he get? Oh, hold on, we're about to see. Nathaniel Vivian was found not guilty of malice murder, but was found guilty of felony murder, armed robbery, and several other charges. I don't he know the difference. He was sentenced to serve life in prison. Daniel's okay. parents spoke out to okay. say that Life they were relieved to find out both culprits were being held accountable for the murder. It came out the way I think was fair. It was a real tragedy two years ago. It's a tragedy today. Forgiveness would be a long, long time away, a long road away, because we've lost our son and he's lost his entire future. Yeah, that sucks. I, I was gonna say the PlayStation 4 is not even that good. Like why, why are you mugging someone for a PlayStation 4? Hey, it was all right, it wasn't that great. Double lift League of Legends. Wait, double lift? Isn't double lift like one of the best League of Legends player right now? Isn't he like a really big streamer? I'm pretty sure he's huge, right? The story involves a tragedy that was dealt to a League of Legends player. It was an event that shook the community to its core. The double lift family murder. Yeah, he's one huge. of the most commonly played games on Twitch is that of League of Legends. Throughout the years, League has gained a massive following thanks to it being one of the leading prospects in esports. I really don't need to tell you guys this, but League is massive around the world. With some, I think League is the biggest esports, right? It's absolutely huge. I go into Twitch every single day and it's always top five categories at the very least. I'm gonna have a look right now. I'm gonna say that League of Legends is like top three categories on Twitch right now. Oh, look, I was right. Look at the top three categories right there. Just chatting, Counter-Strike and League of Legends. Every day it's the same. It is huge. Some League of Legends world championships being viewed by 45 million people concurrently. Our story involves a top professional league player named Ilion Pang. Ilion, who goes by the in-game moniker Double Lift, has been playing professional league since about 2011. He was born in Mission Veo, California in 1993 and was the middle child and younger brother to Eong Pang. Ilion got his start in gaming, playing games borrowed from his older brother. Eventually, Ilion would inherit his older brother's computer and that's how he gets into League of Legends. Ily Play League of Legends on this channel, not a shot, not happening. Ilion was a natural at the game and thrived in its online competitive scene. His success at the highly competitive title eventually caught the attention of Counter Logic Gaming, a professional esports organization. And Counter Logic would give Ilion, aka Doublelift, his first big break in the esports scene, signing him to their gaming org. He was Damn, imagine being one of the first to get like one of the best League of Legends players in the world. This guy's crazy. I'm pretty sure he always goes to Worlds and goes to like the finale of Worlds constantly. He's now a pro gamer. Despite having success in game, personal struggles existed in Double Lift's life. In particular, the young man's parents weren't supportive of his gaming career choice and felt like he was pursuing an esports career against their wishes. They wanted him to go to college and get a more traditional job. Ilion was resistant though and wanted to prove to his family that gaming could bring in the big bucks. In 2011, Ilion was invited to his first major League of Legends tournament overseas. 2011, it is insane to me that League of Legends has gone on so long and it still remains popular to this day. The biggest esports have been going on for absolutely ages. 
Counter-Strike and League of Legends, they have just been around and they show no signs of dying. It boggles my mind that something can last this long. The tournament taking place in Sweden. His parents were strongly against him attending and even allegedly said that if he went, he would die. But eventually they would what? allow Ilion to Okay, go that's like the over-exaggerated parent thing that they do all the time when they say whenever you go away, like, what if, what if the plane crashes? What if, the, you know, someone mugs you? What if something happens? Except this time, like, it might actually be the right. Swedish tournament, and that's thanks to Ilion's older brother, Ehong, talking them down and talking some sense into them and making them realize the opportunity that their son had. Ilion has once reflected on this moment, stating, I think my older brother is like the most influential figure in my life. Thanks to his older brother, Ilion was indeed able to travel overseas and compete in this gaming tournament. But as soon as he got back, they continued hassling him regarding his desire to be a professional player. This hassling eventually resulting in a massive verbal argument with Ilion's mom. Oh, of course, in 2011, of course, they're gonna be like, no son, you're gonna go to school, you're gonna be a lawyer or a doctor, you're gonna sit and play League of Legends. Like, no wonder. Of course, it, back then, it's even worse than it is now. Now you can kind of argue like, oh, so I'm super good at a game. I'm gonna be really awesome. Maybe if you're a content creator, it's a little bit easier to argue because you can show views as a way to say like, look how good I'm doing. With esports, it's way harder because no one over the age of 30 understands anything about video games at all. I'm calling her son lazy and worthless and kicking him out of the house for good. After being what? kicked out, Ilion That's insane. would take to Reddit and vented I'm double lift formerly of Team EG and today I became homeless. Oh my god, they kicked him out. Frustrations to his fans. In this post, Ilion states, That quote, sucks. My mom is a first generation Chinese immigrant and she basically adheres to every single Asian parent stereotype out there. Ilion's Reddit post detailing him getting kicked out because of his pro gaming aspirations would go somewhat viral. Fans and Redditors would chip in to get the now homeless league star back on his feet. We did it, Reddit. An amount that totaled over a thousand dollars. Around this time, Ilion also got a gig writing educational League of Legends content for Team Curse Gaming. Quote, I pretty much made half of the guides for that site. I was just super happy and I could finally pay rent that month. Making enough money to now live on his own, he fully cut off contact with his parents. And after cutting them out of his life, Double Lift's career only prospered further. In League of Legends, Ilion developed what has been called a bad boy persona and- The sad thing is they probably have no idea how well he's actually doing because they have no idea how any of these games work. Like even I would struggle to understand how League works and how the championships works and how people are doing well or who's good. A, a random super old couple of parents, they're gonna have no idea. They probably think he's like homeless or something. That's insane. He's known for being quite the trash talker. I don't even think they're that great. I just think everyone just sucks. In 2013, <laughs> he's responsible for uttering one of the most famous phrases in esports history. That phrase being, everyone else is trash. How good Damn. is it to get a really called together them out. the LCS All-Stars? LCS All-Stars? It technically was, because it was Europe versus North America. Everyone else is trash. Right here on the show. <laughs> everyone else is trash. Thanks to numerous Honestly, that's leagues. fun, though. That's fun. That's not like... It's not super toxic. It's not targeting anyone specifically. He's just like, yeah, everyone sucks, dude. Tournament victories, Ilion, AKA Double Lift, would become a superstar in the esports industry. But as years passed and Ilion became more numb to the fame and money, he began getting curious in regard to what his family was up to. In a 2015 interview done with Machinima, Double Lift said that oh, he eventually no, no, would like to go back to his parents and just oh, no, be his no, son no. again. I don't have to butt heads with my parents every other day. That's so stupid. I can listen to them a little bit and still do my own thing sometimes. Um, instead of have all this conflict and like built up tension and stuff like that. So that neither of us- That is so sad that he just got kicked out of his family because he's a pro gamer. So happy. I just want to go back to them and just like, mm, just be their son one day, you know? Just be like, okay, I'm your son. I hope they apologize. Well. But right now I can't do that, I'm too busy. And around this time, it said that Double Lift reached out to them and was able to come to a sort of tentative peace with them. Quote, Today I realized I still love my mom. Guess family really is forever. Even if I spent 10 years angry with them. Ilion would re-enter the gaming space with a newfound vigor, winning numerous tournaments over the next several years. Fast forward to 2018's League Championship Series. He would go on to help defeat Cloud9's team in the quarterfinals and the Echo Fox team in the semifinals in the League Championship. But just a week before the League of Legends World Championship Finals were to take place, Double Lift was hit with a life-changing tragedy. On March 31st of 2018, Double 
Double Lift's 30-year-old brother, Lee Hong, would find himself in a verbal argument over the phone with his parents. Apparently, Lee Hong was in an emotionally sensitive state after his girlfriend had just broken up with him. In an effort to console the man, Lee Hong's mother and father would travel to his home. After his parents arrived, Lee Hong made it clear he didn't want any assistance and became combative towards them. It's at uh -oh. this point where Lee Hong oh, grabs dude. a butcher knife and chases the family what? out into the street where he what? would then stab both of them. His mother what? died almost immediately from the attack, and the father was critically injured. After stabbing his mother and father, Double Lift's brother would then flee the scene and attempt to carjack a bystander who was sitting in his car. Eon carjack? the man with the knife through his window. But fortunately, this bystander was able to fend him off and escaped with minor injuries to his arm. Deputies oh responded God. to a 911 call regarding a domestic disturbance and reports of a man wielding a knife in the street. They arrived- Jesus Christ, he was just running around the streets with a knife, wailing it around? The emotional distress of breaking up with your girlfriend can be, can be harsh, but not that harsh. It's not that bad. It's not, start running around with a knife bad. Okay, they literally went over to make sure that he was all right and comfort him in a tough time. And he responded with, I'm just gonna grab a knife and go hog wild on them. Shortly after to find the bodies of Double Lift's parents. Eong was found not far away from the crime scene near the Ortega Highway. The man standing eerily still holding a bloody knife. I just can't believe the brother carjacked someone. Lee Hong was arrested without incident and taken to Orange County Jail. Double Lift's mother, who was 59 years old at the time, was pronounced dead at the scene. His father was wounded but managed to survive. He was taken and hospitalized in critical condition. Double Lift would get a phone call from authorities regarding this incident just moments after winning the league semifinals. He had oh no, the semifinals? Oh no. Could you imagine put yourself in that position where you've been a straight for your family for like 10 years, but then you've managed to make it on your own. You're doing your own thing. And as soon as you're at the almost the pinnacle of what you can do in that new thing that you've created, the reason why you were estranged from your family, you get a call saying that your brothers went ham on your on your family, carved up your mom and she's dead and that your father's in like critical condition in the hospital. I, I, I you just break down at that point. Skip That's heartbreaking. Skip the fanfare and fan meetups and head straight to the hospital to check. Yeah, of course you skip the fan meetups. Imagine someone, oh dude, I can imagine the entitled fan. No, oh, I can't believe he didn't meet with the fans. We just went, we were told we would be able to meet with Double Lift and then he went to, he went to go and see his family. But like, I, I paid for super special to VIP tickets. Why didn't he meet with me? I wanted to get an autograph from my favorite league player, Double Lift, but then he went to see his dead mother or something. Check on his father. Ilion would issue the following statement over social media. Oh yeah, the brother introduced him to League. That's right, HMAS. The brother was the person that introduced him to League in the first place, and that was the same brother that went and carved up his- Oh my days. This weekend, I received some terrible news. My brother attacked both of my parents with a knife. As a result of this attack, my mom passed away, and my dad was seriously hurt and is now recovering in hospital. I'm still processing this news and joining up with my dad and little brother to make sure they're okay and the proper arrangements are being made. I'll likely be quiet on social media while I work through this. I hope you all understand and support me as you always have in the past. It's crazy that some people might be like, well, actually, no, if, if you're not streaming League, I'm gonna unsub from you, brother. That's probably the shortest quit longer I've ever seen in my entire life. Double lift. Naturally, many have asked what drove Lee Hong to commit his brutal attack. This is a question Something authorities snapped. have struggled to answer, and to this day, there really is no clear motive established. The despair caused by the recent breakup with his girlfriend was certainly a contributing factor, but that- It is crazy how little we know about human psychology still to this day, 2,000 years after Jesus, I, I guess. I don't know where I was going with that, but we still know so little where it's just like, yeah, well, I don't know. He just, he just snapped. There's something that would have happened. There is an answer to it. We just don't know what it is. Alone doesn't fully explain the attack. The complicated family struggles in the Pang home have been well documented by Ilion and perhaps there is something to that and there very may well have been an undiagnosed mental disorder at play here as well. Those Anything eyes are terrifying. This point, though, is just speculation. On April 2nd of 2018, Ihong Peng was charged with murder, attempted carjacking, as well as two attempted murder charges, and was facing 44 years to life in prison. His bail was set to $1 million. Meanwhile, despite going through the death of his mother, Doublelift announced that he would still. 
he st no participate and attend in the league finals against oh my god how would you be able to play the league finals i don't know how you'd be able to play that's like a super high stress environment the peak of what you can do as a player in the game the stress of being insane even as a clear-minded individual with like eight hours of sleep and hydration being good it's so insanely hard to pu pull off a play on that kind of stage and you go in with that knowledge it's 100 thieves team a tournament that double lift and his team would win wow oh they won that's jesus christ i can't imagine the thought process what's going through his mind I, I just collapsed on the spot devastating event ilion was able to continue to thrive in the league world so far in his career, Ilion has won eight championships, and in December of eight. 2022, he signed a contract with 100 Thieves to play for the 2023 season. Eight championships, winning worlds eight times. That's ridiculous. That's like winning it every single year since the day it was born. The trial okay, maybe not exactly that, brother, but still, that's a lot. Yong Peng is still ongoing. The man has pled not guilty. Jury trial is scheduled for April 24th of 2023. Oh my god, wait, what the fuck? Okay, the day we're recording this is the 19th so that's like that's soon jesus christ by the time this video comes out it'll already be done oh my god oh dota Our next story now we have dota a group of filipino dota players who travel to a dota tournament with some of them not you know the saddest part about that last story is the parents never truly got to understand how far double lifted come how much progress that he'd made, how successful he actually was. That's so that they never truly got to put aside their differences and come to the table and have a conversation. Even though that probably would have happened eventually. That's so sad. Returning alive. This story begins with three young men. 17-year-old Joshua Loxamana. Oh, I, okay, the father lived. Sorry, the, the mother. The mother never got to. But the, fa the father did live, thankfully. 15-year-old Julius Sebastian. And a third unnamed friend who isn't identified in reports regarding this story. All three of these young men were competitive Dota players, and on August 14th of 2018, they would make it their mission to attend a Dota 2 tournament that was taking place in Bagyao City. These three individuals were from Tarlac City. As you can see on this map, it's not the most walkable distance. With none of these boys being in possession of a vehicle, get the parents what they to do decide it. to do is essentially Mom, can you drive me? to the tournament. And according to what? a report from They decided the to hitchhike there? What? That's I guess they couldn't get the mom and dad to boys, do it. They made it to the tournament safely. Participate, don't win, but enjoy their time nonetheless. Oh, After no. the tournament had concluded, they're gonna get the kidnapped, aren't they? Reconvene and start hitchhiking back to their home city. On the way back home, the unnamed friend mentioned earlier in the story separates from Joshua and Sebastian after deciding to rest. And for whatever reason, Joshua and Sebastian- Bro, if you are hitchhiking with three people and one of them are like, no, I'm just, you go on, I'll just rest for a second. I'm not leaving them. Are you kidding me? Sebastian would decide to separate and go forward without their unnamed friend. And little did any of these young men he know split up the this would be the last time any of them would see each other alive. Curiously, the third unnamed friend who had waited back behind Sebastian and Joshua, he had arrived back to Tarlac City before Joshua and Julius Sebastian, despite taking a long break and obviously would be trailing behind. Naturally, this friend started to get concerned that something had happened to Sebastian and Joshua after they had separated. Joshua's mother, Christine Pascal, wasn't initially concerned as she noted that sometimes her son would leave home for multiple days at a time when attending these tournaments. But five days- Isn't this kid 15? Dude, if I was 15 and I was like, I'm gonna go to a tournament for multiple days, I'd get slapped up and laughed at by my mom. Pass. And Joshua nor Sebastian had returned home. And it's at this point where she really starts to get concerned. It's at this point she alerted authorities that her son Joshua was missing. And well, to the mother's surprise, not only did authorities already know what happened to Joshua, they had a full story alleging her son of being a criminal. Police would what? detail a narrative of events, proclaiming that on August 17th of 2018, her son stole a motorcycle only to be caught in a police checkpoint. They claimed that at this <laughs> checkpoint, Joshua pulled out a pistol and shot at officers, resulting what? in policemen shooting the 15 -year -olds? back and killing him in the process. Filipino police also 
also claimed that they found a satchel filled with illegal drugs on the young man's body. In addition Bro, to this what is going Hollywood on? action movie style story described by police, they claimed that Joshua wasn't an innocuous Dota gamer, but instead was a notorious wanted burglar. They even claimed that they had this kid is 15. How notorious can you be? He hasn't had enough spawn time to be notorious Identified yet. Identified him as this wanted burglar by a tattoo that was on his hand. That tattoo in question being the Queen of Pain from Dota 2, the game that Joshua played professionally. How do you get a tattoo at 15? Not the kind of ink you would expect from a career criminal. And as far as Joshua's friend, Julius Sebastian, he never returned home either and is still missing to this very day. What, he just went, what? That's the most insane story I've ever heard. So there's two kids hitchhiking back from wherever they were. One of them goes, hijacks, he does a GTA hijacking on a bike, goes absolutely hog wild, has a ton of drugs on him and starts shooting a police at a checkpoint. And, and the other one just disappears into the wilderness, just pee pee poops and goes away. Joshua's mother was then given funeral instructions and was allowed to see the body of her deceased son. Her son's body was riddled with bullets. Needless to say, the mother had a lot of questions and felt the story described- Bro, this story feels like it's completely made up. It sounds like they just saw a, a John Wick movie and they were like, yeah, let's actually pretend that that was a 15 year old kid that did that instead. ...by police to simply be impossible. The mother claimed that Joshua didn't know how to drive or operate a motorcycle and stating that her son would never steal or deal with drugs. She became suspicious and believed that perhaps police malpractice may have been the cause of her son's death. Think How do you accidentally kill a 15 year old? I, I think that there's the police probably killed him and just made up this story, but I, I wonder how this even like, got in the position to begin police with. police had misidentified him for an actual wanted criminal and killed him by mistake, then planting drugs on his body to sort of corroborate- you know what? I believe, I truly believe that the police are wherever this country is. I don't know what country it was. I, I forgot about that. They just thought he was a random guy because of a Dota tattoo on his hand. They were like, yeah, dude, this this Dota player, real bad news. Not a league player, he's a Dota player. And they just completely opened up on him without even double checking who it was. And, they, and then they had to make up a story afterwards because they realized that it was the wrong person. They just killed a random 15 year old Great, in the Philippines. Bogus. Oh, isn't the Philippines the country that had that president that said he was going to murder all drug dealers or something like that? Story. It's important important to note that the authorities that's the one uh i can't pronounce his name but he was the he was the president that was like i'm going to kill literally every drug dealer i'm going to shoot them all the dead the philippines are allegedly some of the most corrupt institutions in the world there are many reports of national police officers why would pol okay i i understand that they're probably corrupt i have trouble understanding why a corrupt police officer would kill a random 15 year old though he's probably going to go on to explain officers that though engaging in criminal activity such as extortion corruption and involvement in local rackets Policing in the Philippines has become so poor that many businesses can't even rely on them for protection and have to hire private security. Another contentious issue surrounding Filipino policing is their war against drugs. Human rights groups have found that police officers routinely plant evidence on the bodies of gunned down alleged drug users and dealers to help justify their use of deadly force. It's been suspected that perhaps Josh was mistaken for a wanted criminal and was killed due to police negligence and in a wrong place at the wrong time situation got gunned down by police. Knowing oh my god, so what about the other kid though? History of corruption coming from these authorities, Joshua's mother wouldn't give up in the quest to prove her son's innocence and in taking on the police force that allegedly- Man. I would not let a 15 year old hitchhike in a country like that. In fact, any country. I would not let a 15 year old hitchhike uh, 280 kilometers or however much it was over a period of several days to go to a video game competition. He murdered her son. Thanks to rigorous scrutiny from Joshua's mother and several legal advocates in February of 2019, six police officers allegedly involved in the shooting of Joshua Laksamana were hit with murder. Oh, sorry, he was 17. He was 17 years old. The, door, the person that was shot was 17 years old. The other kids, that was a 15 year old. Charges. This investigation also targeted a police supervisor for allegedly obstructing justice. This case had legs and apparently went from a local task force responsible for police corruption and traveled all the way up to the Supreme Court. But unfortunately for Joshua's mother and the advocates of this case, the charges were dismissed with no room for appeal. Naturally, what? Josh's mother was devastated and felt that police had murdered her son and gotten away with it. The woman's I mean, they did. Hope They're literally right. That's insane. Seeking justice in regards to this matter lies with the International Criminal Court. 
there's an ongoing probe into the Filipino police's conduct that involves Joshua's case. She hopes that the ICC will prevail. And to this day, the truth of what really happened to Joshua Laksamana and Julia Sebastian remains a mystery, with police sticking to their original story and international investigations attempting to debunk it. That's well, insane. Bro, I didn't realize, okay, I, I understand that the police are corrupt in some countries, but you have to have a baseline. Is the entire police force just completely broken? It's not a bad apple in a bunch. It's just a bad bunch. In fact, it's a bad tree. In fact, it's a bad forest. You just gotta burn down the forest at that point and start over. That's insane. Well, if you enjoyed this true crime reaction, go and subscribe to Wavy Web Surf, and if you have a video you want me to watch, post it in my Discord server. Link's in the description.